Well, joining me is Tony Haslam, down the line, a former captain in the 13th-18th Royal Hussars and, you know, a cavalry regiment of the British Army. And your son, I understand, Tony, was very good friends with Harry at Ludgrove before he went up to Eton. Um, and, and can I ask, Tony, firstly, you know, your family having interacted with the Prince for many, many years, can I ask you how you're feeling about this string of revelations? Um, hello, Nigel. Well, I think, um, in a nutshell, I think it's horrendous. Um, I think Harry has, and Meghan, um, have gone, it, uh, gone about it in a very cowardly way. And why? what I mean by cowardly is that they, that, you know, William and the King and everybody else, they cannot defend themselves. So, um, and he knows that, and yet he's thrown all these accusations um, and they, they're completely defenceless. So I think it is very cowardly. And for an ex-soldier, I think to behave like that is pretty horrendous. The second thing is it's disloyal. He's been incredibly disloyal to his father. He's been incredibly disloyal to the monarchy as a whole. And the worst part, and the thing that makes me more angry than anything else, is he did that Oprah Winfrey interview, or they did, just before the Duke of Edinburgh died. Now, what... What yeah. the Duke of Edinburgh must have been put through, um, listening to, particularly when the racist thing came up, it, it beggars belief. And then following that, he then make, it goes from bad to worse by, um, you know, for the last two years of her, the Queen's life, who has given such dedication and law to this country, has, has seen his dirty linen be washed in public. And we know from something we heard last week that she, um, it, it, it caused, it, it had effect on her health. And that is totally unacceptable. And the third thing I think he's, is that he is, they are totally hypocritical, those two, because there they are, they're, they're talking about um, mental health. I understand that they support MIND, the, the British mental health charity. And yeah. yet what they've been doing is mentally <clears throat> bullying. Um, William and uh, Kate in particular, and that is unacceptable. So all in all, I think, uh, well, uh, Nigel, you gather from me, I think it's a, it, the whole thing is horrendous. Well, I think you put it pretty, pretty well in those three very strong points, Tony. Thank you very much indeed for joining us this evening. I'm joined now by Chip Chapman, Major General Chip Chapman. Uh, Chip, firstly, um, with your sort of army, military, Falklands veteran hat on. I know that when I talk to you chaps that have been in active combat and you've you know, lost men that served under you and you've had to kill the enemy, and, you know, I ask people about it and they joke about the kit being no good or what the weather was like or how the breakfast was. Um, to boast of killing 25 Taliban, I mean, it's really unthinkable, isn't it? Yeah, it's not good, but more generally, the, the key point is that given who he is, his book should have been vetted for two reasons. The first one is operational security reasons, OPSEC. But the second one, which is the one we're seeing manifested now, is PERSEC, personal security. And we've seen that both in the Taliban making statements and other groups. So he's well, put three groups of people at risk. I mean, you were, his you were head of counterterrorism at the MOD. You're all too you know, well aware of these risks. I mean, is, has he risked... Is it more than just the family? Is it the British Army serving overseas? How broadly, uh, how big is this risk? I think there are three circles at the moment. So the first one is him and his immediate family. But we have to be careful in because uh, all the information and data at the moment would say that complex plots, Al-Qaeda and IS, are just not there anymore. And that was brought out again with the Council for Foreign Relations. But it is the lone actor who might be energised with a grievance and an ideology and if they've read this sort of stuff and it's amplified. And you can see the amplification in a way. So today there was a protest of 20 people in Helmand province, picked up by all the international press. And with the global UMA of uh, the Muslim community, amongst that there will be some who will seek to take potentially revenge against someone who has killed their fellow brothers. You know, he is deemed to be an infidel with them. So there's three, three circles. One, him and his yeah. immediate family. Yeah. Second, the royal family. And, of course, we've got the coronation coming up. Yeah. And the third one would be events that he... high-profile events that he attends, such as the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf in September. The, the army was a second family to him, perhaps in some ways. For some years, it was a first family to him. I get the impression uh, that you guys 
now have no regard for him at all. Would that be fair? Well, I think you have to say that between 2005 and 15, he served honourably. He set up the Invictus Games in 2014. That is honourable. He's dissipate, dissipated that uh, honour, really, with some of the ways that he's gone about the book and the content within it. So he has dissipated the kudos which had accrued to him mm. previously. So don't write him off, and there may be complex reasons to do with some sort of PTSD amongst him, but he's got a lot of recovery to come about. And really, he sort of looks like a sort of pan shop Hamlet with a revenge play allied to Chili Cooper at the moment, and that's always <laughs> a bad gig. If you were still at the MOD in charge of counter-terrorism and you were thinking about the first week of May this year, the coronation, one of the biggest global events to happen in this country because the eyes of the world will be on it since the war, would you think it a good thing if Harry was there as a guest? Well, I do, because I, I, we always quote military philosophers from the past, and you will know this one, so Marcus Aurelius, the best revenge is mm -hmm. not to be like your enemy. And so don't dignify Harry by seeming to be trite, and I would invite him for that reason and that reason and alone. from a security perspective? Well, from a, a security perspective, you're going to have a VVIP challenge, as you did for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, so that will just be another layer of complexity, which is already there with lots of heads of state mm. from around the world going to be present at that uh, seminal event, really. It doesn't occur very often.